Hi, Keith here. In this screencast, I'm going to illustrate the framework for testing models that's described in subtopic 2 of topic 1. Over here on this graphic, we've got the framework illustrated on the left and some advantages and explanation about that framework over on the right. That's covered in more detail in the study guide and statistical manual. My purpose here is not to talk about those issues, but simply to illustrate the process. Before I do that, I'm going to issue a disclaimer. This is not something I would normally do, but when I went to the website for this particular product, A2 Milk, I saw that I had to agree to limitations of liability if I wanted to access certain parts of the site. So here's the disclaimer. In this talk, I'm referring to a particular study done on A2 milk, but I'm not making any general conclusions about A2 milk with respect to allergies or other health issues. Having said that, let's move on. So what is A2 milk? A2 is a particular kind of milk. It does come from cows. It is a natural dairy milk product but it's, bred, it's produced by cows which are bred to have only the A2 or produce only the A2 type of beta casein protein. And that particular protein has been implicated in allergic problems. I emphasize that the producers make no claims about A2 milk and allergies. There are, however, perceptions in the community as you can see from this uh, statement in the paper that I'm basing this little example on. They found a general perception that A2 milk may be better for children in particular who have milk allergies. And they also indicate that there have been media reports which may lead to that perception. OK, so let's start working through the process. And we'll start with the observation. And the observation here is fairly simple. There's a, a belief in some parts of the community that A2 milk is better and causes fewer problems for people who already have an existing milk allergy. So from this, we can construct a model. And the model is our explanation for that particular observation. And we could come up with different explanations. One of them might be that people have just got the wrong idea. But we'll start with the most obvious one, that because of the difference in, in proteins between normal and A2 milk, A2 milk is less likely to cause allergic reactions in people who have an allergy to cow milk. And we are talking about people who have an existing allergy to cow milk. To support that model a bit, more, we would need to go into a little bit more detail about milk allergies and A2 milk. But I'm just summarizing the model there in one sense. Next step is the hypothesis. And the hypothesis is a prediction of something we think we will see or something that will happen if the model is correct. So we've got to assume the model is correct and then think what we might see. Well, one thing we might see is that if we use a standard allergy test, the skin prick test, people, uh, children which have an, an allergy will show a different response to A2 milk than to normal milk. That is that when they're tested with A2, there'll be a different reaction to when they're tested with normal milk. That's a pretty obvious thing that should happen if A2 milk is different in terms of its allergic pre uh, properties. So the null hypothesis is just the opposite of that. And the opposite in this case is that there will be no difference in response. So children with an established milk allergy will not show a different response to A2 milk than to normal milk. If the hypothesis is well constructed, then it should be possible to construct the null hypothesis just by inserting the word not or perhaps the word no. And that's what I've done here. So we've got 
the null hypothesis. This is what we are actually setting out to test and how we're going to do that. Well, the way to do that, obviously, is to get some children who have allergies to milk and to test their allergic response using the skin prick test. And we'll test all the children with both types of milk so that we can compare their reaction to AM2 milk and to normal milk. So this illustrates how that's done. At the top here, we've got some of the cells that are involved in allergic responses over on the image of the right, some common types of allergens, types of grasses and other plants. Down the bottom here, we've got an image of someone's arm when they've been given the skin prick test. Each of the little dots is a site where a drop of test liquid has been placed on the person's arm. And then using the little needle, a prick is made through the drop into the skin. And that's obviously why it's called skin prick test. That allows the test material to penetrate into the skin. And then if the, there is no response, nothing happens. Otherwise, you get a lump or a wheel, W-H-E-A-L, coming up. And you can see that the person has reacted to several of the test materials here. Over on the right, we've got the actual results from this study for 11 patients. And in each case, they've been tested with normal milk and A2 milk. Two other materials, cow's milk extract and histamine positive control, have been included in the study as various types of controls. But I'm not going to talk about those. I'm just going to refer to the normal milk and A2 milk results. Now, what we would expect is to see a bigger response to the normal milk than to the A2 milk, as you see with patient one, 12 millimeters for the normal and 10 for the A2. But as you go run down the list, you'll see that the responses vary. Patient number five also shows a bigger response to the normal than to the A2, but patients three and four show the reverse response. As always, there's some variation in individual responses. So we need to look at the overall results. And we've got an average wheel size of 8.2 for the normal milk and 10.7 for the A2 milk. So there does appear to be a difference, but there's a lot of variation among individuals. See from a smallest value of three here up to the largest value of 25. Given that amount of variability, the difference between the two milks on average is not large enough to be important. That's what the statistical test actually shows. So if we go to the statistical test to compare the response to the different milks, um, we will conclude that response to the A2 milk is equal to, or the response to the A2 milk is not different to the response to the normal milk. It is not statistically significantly different. And that's largely because of the considerable variability in responses. Now the test that's used here is a paired t-test and we'll look in topic five at what t-tests are and why we're using a paired t-test in this particular case. But statistical test gives us no evidence to reject the null hypothesis and that's what we conclude here. Statistical test provides no evidence to cause us to reject the null hypothesis. As a consequence, we accept it. In other words, there's no difference in response to A2 milk and to normal milk. Based on that, we have to reject the alternate hypothesis. So our prediction up here that we made originally turns out to be wrong. We did not see a difference in response. Strictly, the researchers who did this study did not see a difference in response. So what does that lead us to? It leads us to conclude that the alternate hypothesis has been rejected, so the model must be rejected. The results of the test we've done are not consistent with the model. The results are not consistent with the idea that A2 milk 
is going to cause a smaller allergic response in children who have milk allergies. In fact, if anything, the response to A2 milk was a little bit larger than the response to normal milk, but the results either way were not consistent with the model. Now, at this point we seem to have finished, but it was a small sample size and it was only people coming to that particular clinic. So we could either conclude that the model really has been rejected, so we have to come up with some other explanation for the observation. It may be just due to um, some poor advice in the media, or we come up, come up with a different hypothesis, such as we might need to do a larger study. I hope that illustrates how we work through the process and what the nature of the different steps in that process are.